Hello everyone. I have developed a tiny ml based prototype for identifying the faulty lithium ion cells in the BMS path. For this project, I have used seed bio terminal as an hardware and for tiny ml model I have used a example store and also uh, to capture the data I have used a thermal camera MLX90640. Let's go deeper into the project. In this prototype, I have used a seed bio terminal and the MLX90640 thermal camera. So here you can see I have kept uh, 6 lithium ion batteries which is connected to the fluid. So now it's in a constant discharging current for amps. Since all the batteries are in normal temperature, the predicted value is 0.91016 now. You can see in this image like uh there will be a, a thermal camera just uh, above this uh, facing that uh, lithium ion cells and I will have that seed bio terminal uh, board and uh, and also you can see in the background like I'm just using that example software to develop my model and um, this is just a holder to just capture that all the thermal image so what is the problem statement for this uh, existing uh, BMS pack so if you see in an existing BMS pack there will be a multiple battery packs which will be just uh, arranged in a parallel and series combination to make a huge uh, BMS pack. So let's say if it is in a one battery pack, it will contains around 12 to 14 cells in different configurations. So let's take a 14 cells for this. Uh, so we have a single battery pack, we'll have the 14 cells. There will be around uh, uh, 1 to 10 or even 8 uh, battery pack will be that. So uh, for each battery pack, there will be uh, one sensor to measure the uh, temperature of that battery pack and one sensor for the voltage and, and the discharge current. So if we have eight battery pack, we will have eight temperature sensor and each temperature sensor data will be uh, connected to that central BMS ECU where it will just monitor all the temperature of the, each battery pack. But what is missing in this existing system is, uh, let's say if there is any fault in one particular cell, maybe that cell getting overheated, we could not able to identify that. Maybe that collectively that battery pack will have that impact, but we could not able to identify which cell has this uh, faulty uh, overheating conditions. So maybe let's go a little deeper. So if you see one, battery pack and if you assume there will be around uh, 14 cells okay and uh, it's really challenging to identify which battery is a faulty one and if we want to approach in an existing way uh, we have to connect a temperature sensor across each battery cell and we have to monitor the uh, operation throughout the operation so if it just in a cost wise if we compare it will be around uh, uh, 760 USD dollar for uh, uh, deploying a thermal uh, sensor for each battery cells but and also the major challenge is like we don't have any interface to have a 112 battery cells uh, temperature reading in a single BMS EC so there are multiple uh, factors are involving in that so how to uh, analyze that uh, battery operations without having a very less interfaces and with very less uh, cost. So for that, I have approached a different kind of mechanism. So in this project, I have used a MLX90640 where it will be just phasing towards a BMS pack in one side where it will monitor what is the temperature of each battery cells. So, uh, so let's say in the battery pack, it will just get the data in the 32 cross 24 uh, it's like an uh, 32 in the width and the 24 in the height. So I will get that thermal image. And then this sensor is connected to the VO terminal using I2C connection. And this VO terminal will be directly, uh, there will be some work around the have uh, done some coding here. And that will be uploaded to the edge bus tool. So this is a complete overall architecture. So the algorithm behind this is like, I want to identify the faulty cells. So let's say if, if you take any cells, 
so the general operation is like uh, the temperature will be maximum temperature of each cell will be around 55 so if in discharging or in a charging condition if the temperature exceeding 55 degrees celsius then that is the faulty cell which is getting overheated so what we have done here is like i just had a basic check which is like a filter so it will just filter out what are the cells index i mean in that 32 cross 24 array what are the cell index has temperature greater than 55 that will be left alone but what are the other temperature which is less than 55 then that will be changed to uh, zero so that's it's a basic filter to filter only the overheated cell then that data is uh, uploaded to that aging plus tool and i have tried using some uh, basic convolutional neural network model and i could be able to achieve a very good accuracy there and uh, then i can able to deploy that back to the viewer terminal also let's go to the order setup in a deep for order connection so between mlx90640 and viewer terminal is like i have to connect a three voltage to that uh, vcc and STA to ST, SCL to SCL and ground to ground. So this is a basic connection. So this will just denote the pin connection in the VO terminal. So this is the pin connection in VO terminal and this is MLX uh, pinout. So, so in the data acquisition stage, so I have collected a data cells where we can see uh, for each voltage cell, I have collected a data for voltage cell 3, voltage cell 2. So I have around seven different sets here and you can see the data of that so the temperature will be varying very high so this is how i have simulated that and in the create impulse i just selected 768 the 768 window size is nothing but 32 cross 24 so the input image uh, window size is 32 cross 24 as i said before that 32 is a width and uh, 24 is an height so uh, multiplying that we could able to achieve that 768 so let's convert that the time series data with the sun 68 and the input data will be thermal data and i have used a normal neural network classifier in the raw data section i just selected as say parameters and i could able to generate the features here so you could able to see the features generation here and let's go to the neural network so in the neural network classification I just uh, done by a trial and error method to achieve a, a very good accuracy. So I just converted that sound 68 into the 24 columns. So it's actually based on like it might be 24 columns or it might be a 32 columns. So how it happens is like how we are facing the, how we are projecting the camera. Suppose if the camera is in one direction, so that input will be uh, for cell one, cell two, cell three. Sometimes it will be like that. Suppose we are projecting the camera in just a 90 degree tilt in the uh, left or right side. So that cell direction of that will be 1, 2, 3, 4. So that time we have to change that uh, column into 32. And we have uh, two sets of uh, convolutional layers. And I have uh, four filters in the first layer and the eight filters in the second layer. Then I just did the flatter. And I have the series couple of uh, uh, dense layer with uh, 30 neurons and the 10 neurons. Once I have done, I could able to achieve a very good accuracy here. Yeah. And also, apart from that, I have done a model testing. So where my accuracy is 87.5. So I can say the accuracy of that uh, model will be around 87.5 here. And in some cases, it could not be able to predict accurately. So maybe we need a very huge data to try in that. But this proof of concept shows that there is a huge potential of deploying the tiny ML. Uh, for the BMS. So this is the area I have worked on that. So in this prototype, I just used a simple lithium ion battery cells of a six and I have done that, that too in a parallel. Maybe uh, if anyone want, having a huge battery pack with around 100 cells, maybe they want to monitor everything. So maybe they have to keep that into the parallel. So you have to, in a horizontal, you have to capture all the data. So let's go to the deployment section then. Then I have selected the Arduino and I have done the deployment. So in that, uh, for quantization in the int 8, the RAM usage will be a 7.4 KB RAM. 
and latency is 14 milliseconds for this. since in this factor latency is 14 milliseconds is not a uh, very considerable because it's not a very uh, we don't want to even if it is very around like a 500 milliseconds that's fine because we want to detect the uh, uh, faulty cell in that but uh, latency doesn't matter here maybe the ram usage uh, class usage and accuracy is some matters in this conversation and once I build that and I could able to import it in an Arduino. So this is the library I have imported. And also like I want to mention there is a uh, detailed tutorial in the examples forum but also in my access page. You can refer it for uh, how each steps in a very detailed manner. So in this I have included the uh, TFT display to have a display like which cell has a faulty one. So I have that display also and so in that loop I just added that basic application layer over that trained model so it's like a merged one so whatever I trained in that agentless uh, model I just imported as a library so it's a very static code on, on top of that I have added some uh input like a uh, display and also like a uh, data collection and that uh filtering that uh only the overrated cell temperature and uh, just having the buffer and i'm just passing that buffer to that uh, trained model suppose in case if you don't have a faulty battery which gets overrated in discharge maybe you can try the same model with the soldering driver so i just keep this on the on so it's, it's not getting overrated now. So I'm just going to play on top of the battery position to check whether it could be able to predict the model or not. So it's predicting. Yes. So I would like to say this is uh, one of the use case of the TinyML model using examples and the viewer terminal to predict the uh, faulty cell in the BMS pack. So this is the base concept. Maybe it can be improvised having a very huge setup battery to test it also. Thank you.